Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I wanted to talk about os.replace and how it is different from os.rename. Um, the answer is not much, uh, but I also wanted to show an example of a common mistake when, actually two common mistakes, when uh, writing some file replacement code and show you why they're buggy and how to fix them. Um, so let's jump into it. Okay, so first we're gonna write the buggy code. So don't, don't do as this code does. Um, but I've seen code that, that does something like this. If os dot, so say we have like some file that we want to replace, so like foo.txt or whatever. Um, and let's actually, let's actually write hi to foo.txt. And so this is the what the buggy code would do. If os.path dot exists some file, uh, we actually want to import os.path, uh, os dot remove some file, and then with open some file, as f, yeah, f dot write new contents. Now there, there's there's a lot of problems in these four short lines that I've written. I guess five if you include the constant. Uh, there's a lot of problems in these four short lines, especially if you're in a system that is, uh, you know, multi-process, multi-threaded, or you know, multiple concurrent readers or writers. Uh, there are several different states where a system can read this foo.txt file and get completely the wrong values. Um, and I'll point out each of those. So the first is, uh, and actually there's there's a place where this code can crash um, when it doesn't expect to. Uh, let's start with the crash first, since I think it's the easiest one to talk about, which if we spread out this code here, um, this particular part here is a pattern that I see a lot. And um, it has, <laughs> it's actually so common that it has a, a name. It's called time of you time of check to time of use, tuk tuk tau. And I mean, you can read through Wikipedia about it, but the idea about it is that you know this first checks and then performs an action based on it. So uh, it's possible that this returns true and then someone else deletes the file by the time that this runs here. So you could you could imagine forcing this race condition here by in inserting like a time dot sleep, you know, a hundred or whatever here, um, and so. You know, your processor may switch and schedule to a different process, and another process could race and remove this file before that. And then when this tried to remove the file, it would error and, you know, crash this script. So that's that's the first problem. So this is a time of check to time of use problem, which is, again, one, one problem with atomicity. I actually talked about atomicity in another video, so I will link that in the description. Uh, and the second part about this is this file right here change or writes the file or opens the file and makes it empty to start with and then writes the contents. So there's actually a race here uh, where a process can see this file as being empty. Uh, fortunately, there's a good solution to both of these, which is to use os.replace. Um, if we open up the Python 3 os documentation and we look at os.replace, um, it says rename the file or directory source to dest. If dest is a directory, an error will be raised. If dest exists and it is a file, it will be replaced silently if the user has permission. Um, this is the important part. The file will be replaced. Um, yeah, if successful, the renaming will be an atomic operation. This is a POSIX requirement, which is cool. Um, this, note that this is new in 3.3. There wasn't really a good equivalent, a cross-platform equivalent for this before that. Um, but note that os.rename, what's renames? A recursive directory or file renaming function. Huh. Interesting. I've never heard of that one before. But anyway, os.rename works on POSIX in the same way. And I'll actually show you that there's only one very, very slight difference between replace and rename. Um, actually, let's do that right now since I already <laughs> have the browser open. Um, so I'm actually looking at the source code for POSIX module.c. This is what turns into the OS module in CPython. Um, and you'll see here we have the OS replace implementation and it calls this internal rename function. Uh, note that these arguments are going to be the same and it's only this one that's going to change when we look at os.rename, which is right up here. So you'll note for os.rename it has a zero here and for os.replace it has a one. And what that does, if we look for internal rename down here, uh, we have this int is replace. And so this is this is what's changing here. Um, but note, if we look at is replace, um, all that it's changing here 
is these two things. So the first is it changes the function name, and this is for error messages, and the other is it changes the flags only on Windows. So on Windows, there's this special move file replace existing flag that's necessary to replace a file. Otherwise, with just normal rename, it would error if the file already existed. And this is just kind of a Windows versus POSIX difference. Uh, but note on every other platform, rename and replace are exactly the same. So on Windows, there's a difference uh, in that you need replace to actually do the move file replace existing flag. Uh, but anyway, let's let's uh, show how to replace this code. <laughs> oh, that was unintentional. <laughs> replace the code with um, some code that's that's race free that replaces this file atomically. And so the first thing that I usually do when doing this is to create a temporary file next to the file. Um, it's important to be next to the file because uh, renames don't succeed across uh, different file mounts. So if you had it on a different drive or if you had it even in like a tempfs, you won't be able to rename from one location to another if they're on different mount points. Um, so I, I usually make a temporary file directly next to it. Uh, we're going to import temp file. And I believe we want, let's see, Python 3 temp file. I believe we want named temporary file, but we want delete equals false. Named temporary file. Uh, the reason we want delete equals false is because we want to move it into the new place. Okay, cool. So we're going to use name temporary file. We're actually not going to use it with the width statement because we don't actually care about the contents of it. Um, although it does open it. Maybe we want make as temp. Let's see. Oops, I don't want to bookmark that. No. Make as temp. Uh, so make as temp, what do you return? I don't remember. <laughs> I guess we can just try it. Import temp file, temp file dot make. Make as temp. Oh, it returns a file descriptor and the path. Um, okay, cool. So what we can do is uh, fd path equals uh, temp file dot make as temp. And we want to specify the dir here. So actually, let's comment out the old code. Uh, we want to set the dir here. This will force the temporary file to be created in the particular directory that we care about. And so we're going to use os.path.dir name some file. Uh, this will cause it to be created directly in the directory uh, where this file is. And with this file descriptor, we're going to want to write to it. So we can do uh, with open fd. In Python 3, you can open a file descriptor just from its number. And we can do f.write these are the new contents. Uh, and then finally, we can do os.replace um, path with the original path here. And if we run this, python3 t.py, uh, python3 t.py, unsupported operation not writable. Ah, uh, yes, we need to open it in write mode. Uh, you'll also notice a little bit of bug here. We'll fix this bug in a second. In error cases, we're actually leaving this file behind. Um, so little to do, we'll have to fix that in a second. Um, but if we open this in write mode now, you'll see that foo.txt got replaced with these are the new contents. Let's actually put this back for a second. Um, and you'll see that it didn't leave behind any temporary file. But let's fix that bug. So in exceptional cases, we need to make sure that we uh, delete this, this erroneous file. So we're going to do try um, and then uh, accept. I'm actually going to accept base exception. And usually this isn't a good idea, but uh, we're re-raising this exception in, in the exceptional case, so uh, we just want to, you know, catch all of them, even if it's Control C. And so we're gonna do us dot remove path. We actually can call this uh, temp path. I think is probably a better name here. Uh, no, yeah, there we go. Uh, so we want to remove and raise this exception in the error case. So if we, you know had that same mistake that we had before, and we ran this. Uh, you'll see that we don't leave behind any temporary file residue. Um, but if we do this correctly, see before we get this, and if we run this now, we have atomically replaced it with the new contents. Oh, there's no new line at the end of the file. <laughs> Let's make that look less bad. There we go. Uh, but anyway, this is kind of a little pattern that you can use to atomically replace a file. Now, there's several Python libraries that wrap this up. I believe there's one called Atomic Writes, which does this same sort of approach. Um, 
which might be useful for you. Um, but anyway, this is what os.replace is and how it's different from os.rename. Hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.